I greet you in the name of Jesus our Lord and our Savior. It's my pleasure to be with you again in my show, The Hour of Value. Welcome my sister, welcome my brother, welcome friend wherever you are, uh, at which time you are. I appreciate your sacrifice, your patience to be with me, even to listen to me. Uh, let us pray before I start. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, I come before you, Lord. I bring my brother and my sister before you. I ask you, Lord, to continue to bless him, to bless her, and uh, your Holy Spirit to support his her activities, project, everything they are undertaken to do. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The month of January is consecrated to the fellowship with God. As you know our program, uh, I have told, I told you this last time, this is a month of fellowship with God. The month of February, we will see the fellowship with men. The month of uh, uh, March, we see the fellowship with the church. So um, I want to spe uh, specifically, specifically speak to the month of January about fellowship with God. As you know, the word fellowship, fellowship is, uh, uh, there is a word fellow. Fellow, my fellow, my friend, my peer, my my friend so there's a fellow people who are following uh, who some interest something together so we and God will be a fellow we commit to find this relationship to seek for this relationship we commit to go before God and uh, become his fellow fellow citizen fellow a schoolmate, fellow brother, the fellow sisters. You see, we and God becoming a fellow, becoming friends, becoming one. Isn't it interesting? I believe it's very interesting. So, oh, uh, <clears throat> my topic is this you are God's first fruits by becoming God's first fruits you, you become his fellow you become his friend in a fellowship we have also the 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 meaning the word the synonym of communion to commune with God to fellowship with God it can mean also to it can mean to fellowship to to commune with God. In the word commune, we have community, communication, common, common. You see, common interest, community, living together, working together, going together. Yeah, that, that, that's uh, the word commune. So, we, 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 we will, this month, or this month, we are communing with God. We have communion. Common and the union. Communion. Common union. We are one. We are united. And we have these things at common. We have something common. So oh, the Bible said that God brought us forth by His word of truth, by the authentic word, His authentic word. He brought us forth. He beget us. 
by his word of truth, by his authentic word. We have been changed through his word and we have become the first fruit of God. According to, his, to the Bible, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we may be a kind of a first fruit of his creatures. A kind of a first fruit. The word first fruit is simple, means the first agricultural produce of a season, of a season. The first agricultural produce of a season. But here, it means first agriculture produce of season given as an offering to God. So we are first fruits given to God as an offering. So for us to become one, to commune with God, to have a fellowship with God, to have intimacy with God, similar to a bride and a groom in their chamber, in their room of intimacy. Likewise, we and God, we must have that relationship, that love between the groom and the bride. In our spirit, in our conscience, we should also reach the point of getting that level of intimacy between us and God. So when we offer ourselves to God, we become what the Bible say, a kind of first fruit to his creatures. We become God's first fruits. So the first fruits establish connection and a fellowship between man and God. There is this communication, this fellowship, this co co uh, communion between we and God when we offer ourselves as a first effort. So, oh, when we give our first effort, when we give ourselves, when we give what we have, what we give our money, our mind, our strength, our knowledge, our heart to God, our heart to God, we recognize it publicly that God is the one who provides. We recognize that he is the source of our strength. We recognize that God is the source of all our blessings. We recognize that God is the source of all our intellectual capacity. By giving our first fruits, or by giving ourselves to God, we say, Lord, I'm nothing. You are everything. I have nothing. You have everything. I have nothing to offer to you except my all being. When you come, you surrender to God, you become his first fruit. So the, the, this word first fruit has its original. The story of the first fruit is traced back to the Jewish religious ceremony. You see, when the Israelites were in the wilderness, God spoke to Moses to command them regarding the religious service immediately connected with the grain harvest. The sheaf of fast fruit given by anticipation against the time when the people were to possess the promised land. When they were in a wilderness, God spoke to them about the future, about their installment, about their uh, settlement in the promised land, about their dwelling in the promised land what they were required to do once they are there. That was anticipation. 
God told them that when we arrive there, we start to plow the ground, to make a seed, to plant a seed, to harvest the crop. The very fast the crops, the very fast the produce of the season belong not to you, but belong to God. Belong not to the farmer, to the laborer. No, belong to God. So this was very interesting. Because in the wilderness there was no field, there was no crops, there was no harvest, just a manna. And they were they were on a journey every day camping here after three days after one month moved to another place so they were moving their tents according to the uh, movement of the the, the, the the holy spirit the direction of god so it, it was not a time to harvest time to plant and harvest it was not for them tied to sow, to sow a seed and a reap but God told them, when he will be there, when he will become a dwellers of the promised land, this requirement must be honored in your service, in your ceremonial service. God told them to bring their sheath of first fruits to the altar. According to Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 9 to 10, the Bible said, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When you, came, you come into the land which I give to you, and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruit of your harvest to the priest. You see, this was a commandment from God, instruction from God, that they would come with their uh, first fruit to the priest. So, it was commanding to bring the sheaf of the first fruit to the priest on duty. This offering was at somehow a point of contact between the offerer, the man, and the giver of the blessing. The giver of the blessing is God. The one who come to offer is the man. So when you come to offer your first fruit, you will offer this before God. Then God will receive the shift of your product, of your first fruits, then he will bless you. So the fellowship was established between God and man through what? Through the sheaf of first fruit. Praise the Lord. So the offerer was to declare that he brought the sheaf of the first fruit in humble attitude and a grateful acknowledgement of the divine providence. Yeah. Grateful acknowledgement of the goodness of God that had settled him and his family in this fruitful country pursuant to the gracious promises made to his forefathers. So this was just when he brought, when he come before the priest with the sheaf of the fat fruit. This was an attitude of recognizing acknowledgement of God, the provider, the source of blessing. So this fat fruit we connect the offerer and God. So the fat fruit is the point of contact, the fellowship, intimacy brings union, communion between man of and God. So the priest should take the basket out of 
the offerer's hands and set it down before the altar of the Lord. While the priest is giving these grain offerings to God from the hands of the offerer, the offerer was required to make an authentic proclamation or confess before God and before the priest some words of recognition, acknowledgement. So that proclamation was well fitted to excite in the mind of the offerer humility, gratitude, and a trust in God. Praise the Lord. This was an important part of the worship rendered to God. For an offerer to be mindful of his affliction when God has given him a rest from, from them, from those afflictions he had. With attitude, humble attitude, acknowledgement, he will remember all the affliction of the past. And today, the harvest, then he praised God. I remember here in America in November, we have what we call Thanksgiving. People remember. They remember what happened in the past. When the pilgrimage came to this country with nothing. But by the providence, the goodness, the divine providence, after one season, they harvested then they ate they thanked God from that day the culture of thanking God was embraced in the country because God provided God remembered them similar to the first fruit offering it's just to remember all the time of affliction we went through, the time of problems, difficulties. But now we are here to eat, to enjoy. Praise, honor, and glory be to our God. So the offering were made to the Lord at his altar. The altar belonged to God. During this time, of offerings, the offerers were asked to employ, to use their time in prayer, in praise, and a godly meditation. So according to Deuteronomy 26, 1, 11, the Bible said, it shall be when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and you possess it and dwell in it, that you shall take some of the first of all the produce of the ground, which you shall bring from your land that the Lord your God is giving you, and put it in a basket, and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. And you shall go to the one who is priest in those days, and say to him, I declare, I declare today to the Lord, your God, that I have come to the country with the Lord, a sword to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket out of your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord, your God. And he shall answer and say before the Lord, your God, my father was a Syrian about to perish, and he went down to Egypt and dwelt there, few in number. And there he became a nation, a great, mighty, and a populous. But the Egyptians mistreated us and afflicted us and laid hard bondage on us, 
they remembered the, the, the old affliction. Then they, they are bringing their sheaf of uh, first fruit to the Lord. You see, we, we went through, we come from many pains, a difficult time, a bad time. Now it's time to offer our first fruit to God, you see. So then we cried out the Lord. So, but the Egyptian mistreated us, afflicted us, and laid a hard bondage on us. And then we cried out the Lord of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice, and looked on our affliction, and our labor, and our oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and with an outstretched arm, with a great terror, and with sign and wonders, he has brought us to this place, and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruit of the land which you, O Lord, have given me. Then you shall say Said it before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. So you shall rejoice in every good thing which the Lord your God has given you and your house, you and the Levite and the stranger who is among you. You see, when they are offering, the offerer start to proclaim it. Authentic proclamation, authentic prophetic word, authentic um, commitment, authentic confession before before the priest, before the Lord, before the altar of the Lord. By doing thus, by doing that, they will honor God. They will honor God in everything they do. So, we are taught to honor the Lord in the Bible with our substance, with our first fruits, with all we have, with all we increase. You see, we are not to eat of our new corn, no. Till God's part is offered of him out of it. Don't eat your first crop. Bring first fruit to God. Our first salary, you, you see, doesn't belong to us but to God. When your first job did you give, did you give your first salary to God? If not, pay because it's a debt. Debt to God. We must always begin with God in everything. Everything you want to do, begin with God. That's first fruit. Begin every day with Him by prayer, by committing, commit, commit yourself to Him. Begin every meal with him. Begin every business with him. To sleep, begin with him. To chat, begin with him. In brief, seek the kingdom of God first. See, the Bible says seek first the kingdom of God and other things will be added. In Proverbs 3.9, the Bible says, Honor the Lord with your possession and with the first fruit of all you. You are increase. You are increase. Honor the Lord with your possession and with the first fruit of all your increase. When you give to God your first fruit, your possession, you communion with Him. You become in fellowship with Him. This is a point of contact connection between you and God, your salary, your first fruit, your money, your, your knowledge, your intellect, your knowledge, your strength, whatever you give, your brain. When you connect with God, with your brain, with your mind, your strength, you dwell in the fellowship. But it's very interesting that Jesus, Jesus is the first effort. When he came to connect with us, he became first fruit to God, first fruit to us. When you sacrifice yourself, when you give yourself to people, you become first fruit. According to 1 Corinthians 15 20, the Bible says, Now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Jesus, the first the first fruit, because he became the first one to arise from the dead. So the first 
convert the people in their families, in the region, in the community, they become fruitful. Like my father, my father in Congo, Republic Democratic of Congo, he was among the first converted by the, 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 the Swedish missionaries in the, 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 the 20 years, 30 years, years in Congo. My father was at some point the first fruit of the Swedish missionaries. He became converted. Then he went to speak the word of God to his people. In a rural area, in a jungle, they couldn't listen to him. After many years, like 10 years, they come to salvation. He was persecuted, but he was the first fruit. In 1 Corinthians 16.15, 1 Corinthians 16.15, I urge you, brethren, you know the household of Stephanas, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have devoted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Here in Achaia province, Stephanas' family were the first fruits of Achaia to be converted. So, if you are the first uh, converted, the first Christian in your family, in your generation, in your home, you are the first fruit. Because you are the, the first who received Jesus. So, the redeemed, the Christian from the earth, are called the first fruit to God and to the Lamb. We are the Christian, we are first fruit. Because among a million of sinners, we came there. So we are first fruit to God. So we have this fellowship with God. Revelation 14, 4. These are the ones who were not defiled with the women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being first fruit to God and to the Lamb. Christians are first fruit. Among thousands, Hundreds, millions, they came out. They are fast fruit to God. Let me tell you, you are fast fruit. You are fast fruit to God. So, as a Christian, you know, we have been born by the power of the Word of God. We have the living Word of God in us. So, we have a life, eternal life. The life that is consecrated to the Lord. Therefore, we are fast fruit. Romans 16, 60, sorry, Romans 11, 16, the Bible says, For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. So if you are holy as a first fruit, if you are dedicated to God, the rest of ours, what we do, our job, our mind, our everything will become also holy. So, when we are holy, our family should be holy. Our sons, our daughters, our speeches, everything we have. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. You are a first fruit. Dear Lord, I thank you for this wonderful time. Thank you for my brother, for my sister. Lord, bless her. Bless him so he may become a first fruit in his generation. Consecrate to you. Consecrate your work. I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen.